Thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, the whole thing started with this earlier case for Dr. Daughter, who, after doing this uh, angiogram, realized that patient has improved significantly. That's where he got the idea of of dilating atherosclerotic lesions, and he published his article in 1964 in circulation. But the very first uh, reported uh, total occlusion of iliac artery uh, treated with angioplasty was reported by late uh, Charlie Techmeyer back in 1979. And shortly after that, I published my work in iliac artery uh, uh, lesions, including total occlusions. And but that time, this uh, technique in angioplasty was not really received well by vascular surgeon. And Dr. Abbott uh, wrote an editorial, and he called angioplasty a potentially dangerous. Uh, uh, procedure, a weapon, he called that. Uh, anyhow, this went, went on, the life went on, and we started doing uh, a total occlusion of iliac arteries with a lytic therapy. I published my work in 1995, reported 99 cases. And then when the stent came along, uh, uh, as you see, the five year patency was not. Uh, particularly uh, good. It was 54 and 56 percent uh, reported. <clears throat> well, when I did with uh, pre uh, stenting thrombolytic therapy, I was able to get our primary success rate to uh, 90. Uh, to 79 percent, and secondary to 90. One person. So we did very well with the analytic therapy. Looking at the uh, recent uh, publications, I ran into four uh, articles uh, published in 2006 and three of them in 2011 with very good result. A five year patency rate at 80, 82 percent. And what, what, what was really interesting that all these pop, uh, articles were published by vascular surgeons and from surgical uh, departments. So it, it seems now we all accept that uh, endovascular techniques is the way to go as far as iliac artery occlusion is concerned. When it comes to the abdominal aorta, uh, your lesion really has to be severe enough to uh, cause any symptoms, and uh, no aortic lesion uh, less than 75% or 70% cause really uh, symptoms. But fortunately, uh, uh, it is probably one of the easiest uh, stenosis to, to treat. Uh, you can even do a primary stenting and uh, put the stent in your stent doesn't have to be as big as a aorta because you can dial it in smaller stent to a larger size as we've done with this one and you get the uh, very nice result and that shows you we put a stent in a aorta and we put two stent in the common uh, iliac arteries and give you uh, a very good long-standing result Aortic lesion can be more complex and bigger. Once again, um, it can be treated very nicely with uh, with bare stents. I don't like cover stent in this type of the lesion because uh, I'm afraid of occluding uh, lumbar arteries and causing uh, lumbar um, spine problem ischemia. Um, in you probably say, why well, we don't see that very often with aneurysmal disease uh, that we go and put the graft in. And the reason is that happened very gradually and the collateralization develops. But when you go and shut off 
the flow to the spinal cord suddenly you take a very high risk of having ischemia of spinal cord now some of the lesions are very complex and uh, like this case you don't know where the aorta ends where the iliac arteries starts and um, at the beginning when the uh, uh, stain came uh, became available a lot of people uh, put a uh, stent extending one from this side and one from the other side into the aorta and in order to take care of the lesion like this but that created a uh, uh, re-stenosis uh, um, in a short period of time. I believe that these ought to be treated as aortic lesion and iliac lesion and like this and put a stent into the aorta then two stents in, in the iliac arteries and you get a very good result and uh, the rate of re-stenosis is considerably less. This case was sent to me by one of our uh, cardiologists uh, patient was going to have coronary angio. They went from right side, find an iliac was occluded, went from the left side, was occluded, was sent to us for treatment, and a urogram showed uh, very uh, a difficult lesion because the aorta is occluded right at the origin of the uh, inferior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery is the only vessel supplying the whole uh, pelvis and reconstitute the uh, the iliac artery to some extent so this is a very difficult uh, technically not difficult but is difficult because you want to treat it without occluding the inferior mesenteric artery and causing the severe ischemia of the bowel and both lower extremities. So what I did with it, treated this with a lytic therapy first. As you see, we put a catheter down to this point and after lytic therapy, and it shows that that's all they left from the aorta. By doing that, we were able to uh, Rechannelize the the right one and go from the left side as well, and uh, and do the case like that. So uh, I know it's not fashionable today to use lytic therapy, but lytic therapy is really anyone who does any endovascular work ought to know how to do lytic therapy because it makes a life really easy uh, for you, especially especially in iliac arteries. Iliac arteries uh, are segmental when, uh, disease. They very seldom you may see that um, a disease throughout the whole iliac artery system. We proved that by doing lytic therapy on these uh, occlusions. In, in a common iliac arteries, most of the time your problem is up here and the rest of the iliac artery is okay. It could be the other way around if in rare cases that your problem is down here, then you have thrombosis of the rest of the iliac artery. This is a lesion that uh, is a short occlusion. On my approach, is always contralateral. I uh, made a special catheter for this uh, that I go from uh, contralateral approach, then I recanalize the aorta, I mean the iliac artery, this way, because the rate of uh, subintimal insertion uh, at this point is a lot higher in going from the iliac artery rather than coming from above, and this is the result. Now, the uh, same thing can happen in the external iliac artery. You may have a short lesion in the proximal end, or if it happens in distal end, then you have uh, a thrombosis. Uh, this uh, one other thing that you really ought to consider uh, looking at every single case is look at the other side. For every lesion that you have on the right, you have one on the left side look at the right side, it will tell you what happened on the left side with this inclusion. If you look at over here, you see the lesion is in the external iliac artery is right up here. 
we treated that with the lytic therapy and that was the lesion went out and rather than recanalizing and stenting the whole external iliac artery we just put a short stent and got a very good result the same thing happened when you have a lesion down here look at the left side this is a stenosis here now i anticipated at that time that this lesion would be on this side as well so we treated that with lytic therapy as you see perfectly normal artery to this point and here is where the lesion was we recanalized and dilated that a very good result didn't even need the stent it, uh, now how you might ask that what happened that you get total occlusion of the common and external iliac arteries everything from aorta all the way down to the common femoral artery get occluded <clears throat> in this case is you have to have occlusion of the internal iliac artery to start with in order to get total occlusion of the iliac system and and when you have occlusion of the internal iliac artery it really doesn't matter where you get a stenosis that become totally occluded if it's down here in the middle or in the proximal you get occlusion of the total uh, iliac arteries this is an example like that was treated with the lytic therapy this is after six hours 24 hours the lesion is only this short but we have occlusion of the entire uh, iliac system this was treated with the uh, palmos stent and the result and this is the before and after and you see there is still occlusion of the internal iliac artery this is a technical uh, a case to show you how I'll do the uh, contralateral approach. This is a patient that I recanalized this previously and put a stent in it in the common iliac, but it got reoccluded. So I, I approach it from this side. This is the catheter that I have made for going to contralateral iliac. And as you see, the recanalized, and the wire comes all the way out here. When this happens, you can use this as guidance, puncture this artery, and then put your sheath in. Then you feed your wire from the other side into this sheath and bring it all the way down, like here. Then you grab this sheath with the wire in it and pull it out. So what you have now, you have a wire that coming from the right side going out to the left side. And then you put your sheet over this, put a catheter over this wire to this point. Then you can take, as you see catheter is over here. Then you take this wire out, insert it into the aorta, put another wire in this catheter that's sitting now on the right side then pull it back the wire is in the order then you have access from both ends and go on and do your work so this is a very uh, easy simple way rather than fighting it going from retrograde from the uh, left side in conclusion um, percutaneous treatment of aortoiliac occlusive disease regardless it's a total occlusion or stenosis has replaced it's not now that another alternative to surgery no it has replaced surgery totally even by vascular surgeon themselves do that uh, uh, endovascularly it has replaced aorta by ephemeral graft however we still have some cases that either uh, endovascular doesn't work or uh, we attempted and the uh, order very complex case that we still uh, depends on uh, surgical repair thank you very much